Welcome back to the exchange. High yield muni bonds have been solidly outperforming corporate equivalents so far this year, up about 4%. The HYG, meanwhile, basically flat. And my next guest says a classic supply and demand imbalance is helping to drive those returns. He expects this to continue as well. Joining us for more is Craig Brandon. He's co head of municipals at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. Welcome to you. Hi, Kelly. Interesting juncture to check in on this. Some people have been pointing to the corporate high yield market as showing some cracks, spreads are widening. What's right. going on on the muni side of things? From the muni side, corporate credit is very stable, right? You still have some of the COVID money on balance sheets uh, on the, on the, the muni side. Um, it's starting to run down, but overall, except for a couple of sectors, the, the muni credit side is very stable, but it's very much being driven by, you know, classic supply and demand technicals right now. So in, in, that would sort of imply that the fundamentals of things that are on the little bit riskier side of the muni space still look okay from an economic point of view. When we get big headlines like congestion pricing ain't going to happen, I mean, right. is that a really unique case or is that telling us something about the extent to which some of these projects are, just aren't going to get the expected funding and maybe the, is there, are there implications of the muni market there? Yeah, I, I think the MTA is more of a unique space. I mean, there's a lot of politics involved in that, obviously, but, you know, with munis, we, we, we live with politics, right? That's just part of our day-to-day -day operation. Um, but I, I think that that's a little bit more of a one-off. At the end of the day... You know, there are some credit issues out there that you see on occasion, but I think overall the state of muni credit in the high yield market is, is, is stable right now. One more on that specific case. Did we see munis selling off after they canceled those plans? At least I'm just curious if there were any ripple effects. No, there really weren't. Hmm. Um, I think everybody watches the MTA very closely. I think I believe at, at some point there'll have to be a resolution to it. You know, listen, I mean, the MTA is, is a, a vital piece of New York's infrastructure. But what will the resolution be? If, they, if, they don't, if they're not going to get a billion a year from congestion pricing, what right, do they do? Issue right, more debt? I mean, right. what, are the, what are their other options? I Raise... mean, they already own a lot of debt right now, right? right? right. They're already at their max. Um, I, I do think that at some point there has to be some kind of resolution on congestion pricing. A billion dollars a year is a very large number. You think they'll be forced to actually try to implement some version of that, basically? I do think at the end of the day there will be some version of it. That's, I, I, we were cheering when that didn't, because they worry about the city's long-term prospects. Like the, the line goes, if you want less of something, tax it. If you make it more expensive to go into Manhattan, the right. idea is that fewer people will do so, but I don't see how that's good for long-term vitality. Right, it is difficult. But at the end of the day, I think in our country, we have to decide whether we want to spend money on critical infrastructure or not. I mean, you know, if you look at other parts of the world, if you look at sort of their public transit, it, it, there's much more investment in public transit and infrastructure in other parts of the world. Now, other parts of the world are often more expensive to live and have higher taxes. So I think in the United States, we have to decide if we want to invest in infrastructure or not. And if we are going to invest in infrastructure, how are we going to fund it? And congestion pricing is one option. There's other options I think to look at. I feel like we're just a car country. And, you know, every <laughs> the opportunity, these projects are so massive. Look at when they try to extend the subway lines in New York City and right. what a complete debacle that was, or light rail right. and all of these things that you sort of feel like have gone nowhere. From the muni side of it, though, would you say that the markets are open, the investors are there to fund these projects if there was the sort of the political and public will to go forward? They are. Um, I do believe that in the muni market, we believe in funding infrastructure. Um, you know, if you look at places, you know, taxable munis are considered infrastructure projects in other parts of the world, right? right. In Europe, um, Solvency II considers some munis infrastructure assets, and you get insurance companies in other parts of, of Europe that are investing in munis on the taxable side because they're considered infrastructure assets. And Makes I think sense. in Asia, I go to Asia twice a year, and they consider munis infrastructure assets. We we finance our infrastructure in the United States in the muni market. We're the only country that does that. And, and it sounds like maybe to our detriment. It could be. Maybe, maybe could there be. could be a little bit more push to get some of the institutional players kind of uh, further involved there. Correct. So just talking very um, opportunistically, what kind of yields can people get in munis these days where they, they still don't have to worry too much about, you know, their capital being at risk? Right. So, um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities to, you know, get around a 4% tax exempt yield. I know there's, you know, there's there's double A, triple A New York's, you know, New York bonds trading just above a 4%, which on a taxable equivalent basis on the highest tax bracket, that, that's over 7%. Seven, yeah, absolutely. And for a New York City resident, that's, you know, it, it, it's 9%, right? Even Those without, are very attractive. Even and, without congestion pricing, still going to be okay? Still going to be fine. Craig, thank you very much. Uh, we'll let you get back to Boston on the infrastructure, if it will allow. <laughs> Appreciate you coming down. Thanks, Kelly. Craig Brandon from Morgan Stanley. That's it for The Exchange. Tyler is getting ready for Power Lunch, and I'll join him on the other side of this break.
Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Help build America's future with BAM insured Muni Bonds. America is strong, and today's investments in essential American infrastructure make it even stronger. Build America Mutual only insures U.S. municipal bonds, providing an added layer of security to improve any portfolio with guaranteed income that helps investors reach their goals. Be part of building America. Build a better portfolio. Invest in BAM-insured bonds. Hi, Dad.